With Coach Boynton once again right in the heart of Big 12 Conference play, although we'll take a break from Conference play for the Big 12 SEC Challenge and a really important stretch for Oklahoma State here with three of the next four at home. So now you've had three games with Woody Newton in the starting lineup and going with a bit of a smaller lineup. What have you seen in that lineup that's most encouraged you, and what are you still trying to get a feel for with that new grouping? Well, I think the, the encouraging thing is what, what we had been struggling with was just offensive flow and consistently getting quality shots. I think we've seen strong progress in that area over the last three games. It hasn't resulted in a bunch of 90-point games, but we're getting really good shots. Uh, the ball is moving better. The, ball, the, the floor is spaced much better, which is causing a couple of things. We're getting better three-point shots, but the reason we're getting better three-point shots is because the floor is spaced and we're able to play inside out a little bit more without having to play in traffic. As far as having to make some adjustments defensively, rebounding-wise, you know, I think everyone thinks you make a change and it's just as simple as flipping a switch. It doesn't really work that way, does it? I mean, are you still getting a feel for some of the other components? Well, I think the, the, the thing you have to recognize is every decision and every change impacts more than just that change. So when you put Woody Newton in, you're taking your defense and probably like it, making it less physically uh, imposing. When you take a guy like Tyreek Smith out of the lineup, uh, and obviously you become a little bit smaller and more susceptible to giving up offensive rebounds, which again, we just have to develop the mindset of, you know, doing it as a group, you know, gang rebounding. We, we've had games where Bryce Thompson's gotten nine rebounds. We've had games where John Michael's gotten six or seven defensive rebounds. And we've got to continue to pride ourselves in limiting teams to one shot, which was ultimately the thing that hurt us the most in the game against Texas. Musa Cisse obviously has has tried to come back. He's played on a very limited basis. Where do you feel like he is right now? So we're trying to couch this this dichotomy here between you know getting him back and getting him in a limited fashion for you know the rest of the season, or allowing him to get as healthy as he's capable of getting healthy, and having him consistently for you know the last month of the season or so. And so. Uh, you know, we, we brought him back last week. He wanted to play. He's always wanted to play. Uh, but I think we saw that his limited nature, you know, may have been putting him in more harm's way moving forward than helping him, which ultimately isn't going to help us. So we've got to make sure we get him into a place where not only is he physically ready, but mentally he feels like he can push through a little bit of fatigue, uh, maybe have to play with a little bit of pain, but not re-injure himself. So uh, just kind of a day-to-day -day approach right now. We'll continue to consult with our doctors and trainers on where he is. Obviously allow him to have some input on in how he feels. And hopefully we can have him once we hit February for the rest of the season. And he's not really been hurt much in his career, has he? I mean, I think sometimes when a player perhaps hasn't been hurt, the mental management of that is maybe more challenging than people think? Yeah, no question. And obviously, you know, these guys watch TV. They see guys get hurt and maybe sometimes never recover. Or they see guys get hurt and, and have a hard time getting back to their normal selves. So the psychology of an injury is just as uh, sometimes debilitating as the physical nature of what's actually ailing them. So for him being the first time hurt and understanding what's at stake for our team, but also for his long-term future, is certainly something that we're working through still. So now you'll move out of conference play for the Big 12 SEC Challenge against Ole Miss. We've talked about this many times before, but do, do you like going out of conference play at the end of January? Do you like the break? Would you rather stay in your conference <clears throat> rhythm? Or what do you think? Well, we're excited to play always. The truth of the matter is I, I'd much rather this week to have my team have a day off, to be honest, so that we can get healthy, uh, get a you know, one less day of kind of grinding through practices and preparation. But we'll accept the challenge. We know it's a great opportunity for us outside of conference to play a quality opponent. It's very well coached by Kermit Davis. Um, and so we'll, we'll prepare for the next couple of days to, to play against a team who's got a lot of talent. Uh, Mike, Matt Morrell and, um, and, and some of those other guys are really, really talented players who you know, came into the season expecting to be all-conference performers for them. They've gotten, not gotten off to the great start in conference play that they want, but there's a lot of basketball left for both teams. Is it accurate? Am I understanding correctly? This is it for the challenge? Last, this is the last time? This is the last time that the SEC Big 12 will face off in this. There's a lot of dynamics move, with moving parts in college basketball. One of them is that the SEC and ACC are going to start a challenge next year, so we'll lose them. I'm sure that the people in administration and at the conference office are working to try to figure out you know, how to best fill that gap. And uh, maybe they leave it up to each coach individually on how to you know, assess their non-conference schedule moving forward. 
So you're in the midst of a stretch of five of seven at home. If you take apart that stretch and look at it now, you'll have three of your next four at home. I know every game's important, but is this money-making time? Is this the time where you look at it and say, okay, let's make a run, let's start it right now? Absolutely. It's definitely, you know, we get to close to February. We always talk about wanting to play your best basketball in the last month of the season and playing relevant basketball throughout the month of February, which means that you're playing for either positioning in the conference tournament, a postseason opportunity out there in front of you, or a championship. And uh, all three of those things are still in front of us. But this stretch right here will be key to the psychology as our team moves into February as we finish this last game in the month of January before we resume conference play next week on the road. And a big part of that's the home court advantage in these three games out of four you'll play at home. And, you know, you're not, you know, you're not opposed to jumping into the stands. Or, I'm not you know, opposed. You lost your voice for, he lost his voice for a few days because uh, – because he was, you know, encouraging the students, <laughs> encouraging. You don't mind, do you? No, I don't mind at all. Whatever it takes. I'm all in. Uh, both feet, full body, full voice, whatever it takes. I'm, <laughs> you know, I want our team to have the best atmosphere. I want our fans to enjoy watching these kids play. Uh, in many ways, they need each other. You know, to, to the experience of being at a high level emotional college basketball game for students, the experience of having a great crowd as a player, uh, is a marriage that, you know, is, is really, really difficult to understand unless you're in it. And so uh, we, we have another great opportunity at home on Saturday is to remember the 10 game and another opportunity to continue on telling the story of the legacy of the folks uh, who lost their lives, unfortunately, back in t 2001. And uh, so we're excited to play in front of our home fans again. And the opportunity to do it again three times in the next four games is a really, really big one for us. And we need you in gallagher Iba Arena Saturday at 7 when the Cowboys take on Ole Miss. For Coach Boynton, I'm Dave Hunziker. We'll see you next week.